Hello and welcome to The Entrepreneurial Musician, a newsletter coaching service podcast and blog preparing today's musicians for tomorrow's realities. This is TEM 285 titled Follow the Green Lights. Thank you to Parker Mouthpieces for providing the hosting for TEM. Parker Mouthpieces offers fine, customizable component mouthpieces for horn, trombone, euphonium, and tuba, including the Andrew Hits Artist Model Tuba Mouthpiece. You can find out more at parkermouthpieces.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Shout out to this week's new subscribers to the Portfolio Career Playbook newsletter. I appreciate you. If you'd like to join them in receiving the tips, tricks, and inspiration needed to thrive with a portfolio career in today's music business, head over to signup.tem.fm and subscribe today. Okay, let's get right to it. TEM 285, follow the green lights. Today's episode was inspired by the producer of Sex in the City, Michael Patrick King. One of his go-to sayings really resonates with me, and that is, follow the green lights. Your life and career will throw lots of stop signs at you. You won't advance at an audition. A grant proposal gets rejected. Ticket sales suck for one of your band's gigs. You're going to hit stop sign after stop sign, actually, because if your business doesn't have a hard part, then you don't have a business, and a hard part means there will be stop signs. But if you have the courage to keep showing up day after day, then there will be green lights as well. This can take the form of being chosen for something like a teaching gig or winning an audition or getting a song licensed for a TV show. But it can also take the form of a songwriting kick where you hit a sudden stretch where you're able to write songs twice as fast as usual and they're really good. Or a video on your YouTube channel gets three times as many views as similar videos or of a creative spark with a fellow musician, uh, or the list goes on and on. The beautiful thing about a portfolio career is that I get to lean in on the things that are working. If my practice coaching from Hits Academy suddenly explodes, then I can and will put some other things on the back burner and really lean into that. That freedom to adjust my time and efforts to whatever is resonating with the world at any given moment is absolutely one of the best aspects of having a portfolio career in the form of multiple income streams. But I also choose to read this quote from Michael Patrick King as following the green lights emotionally. I am in my 24th year of being a professional musician and have been paid to perform in something like 25 countries around the world and the vast majority of those more than once. I'm telling you this because I am still, after all of that validation, I'm still wired to get bummed out when, after like five green lights in a row, the world serves me up one single stop sign. It's uncanny. I don't think I'm particularly bad about this. I just think it's a part of the human condition. And I do take regular steps to help me keep a healthy perspective on my career and on life. But I still want to focus on that one thing that didn't sell well at all, rather than on all of the things that did. That's why I have to do work to maintain a healthy outlook. I have to do work so I can follow the green lights and not stop and get fixated on the stop signs. It is vital for me in my portfolio career to do that work so I can keep going. Okay, I did have some people reach out this past week uh, about the five major moves offer to begin the year. I do have just a little bit of space. If you are looking to have me via TEM coaching help you to figure out what the five things that are going to move the needle for you most in 2023 are, you will leave this 90-minute session uh, with a completely clear idea of not only what you have to do, but what your first action should be for each of them. And uh, I've had uh, people that have been helped quite a bit by this uh, that have told me afterwards how beneficial it was. So I'm uh, I'm running a deal at the beginning of the year. If you would like to uh, hear more about this, then just email me through tem.fm and I will get right back to you. But space is limited. So go ahead and grab one of those last spots now if that sounds like something that is appealing to you. Okay, this week's quote is from a marketer named Caitlin Borgoen. And she um, she tweeted this, actually, and I featured this in this week's Portfolio Career Playbook newsletter, which I plugged at the beginning of the episode. And this is real gold about marketing. Most marketing is, quote, this is our product and this is what it does. Better marketing is, 
this is our product and the benefits it creates for you. Great marketing is this is what you're struggling with and here's how to overcome those struggles and be a better you. Our product helps. Basic marketing skills is towards the very top of the list of things that is criminal for music schools to never even mention in passing to music majors. Let's use the example here of like selling, I don't know, audition coaching, uh, which is obviously just a specific form of teaching. But this goes for anything. This goes for booking your group on a concert series. It goes for getting commissioned to write a piece of music for anything. Most people would market audition coaching something like this. You will get five one-on-one -on -one sessions with me in addition to getting video feedback every week in the form of blah, 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 just listing what the person was going to get. A better version is something like, I offer one-on-one -on -one audition coaching that will help you do your best on audition day and give you a precise blueprint for exactly how to structure the two months of practicing leading up to the audition. This is way better than the first one, but it still isn't the great marketing that was listed above. The great marketing would be something like, you have put in thousands of hours of work into achieving your dream of winning a major audition, and yet the results just aren't there, and you rarely leave an audition feeling like you truly played your best, but instead leave frustrated and disappointed. Let Hits Academy give you the proven and precise blueprint for playing your best when it's all on the line and achieve your dream today of winning a major audition. Full caveat, I just spit that copy out like in two minutes uh, right before I, I hit record. Uh, and for me to write truly great copy requires me to write it, to walk away, to come back, to rewrite it, and then maybe do all of that for a second or even third time sometimes. But I think that that gets the gist across. You can hear how that last one is by far the best copy for someone who has been busting their ass for the last decade without the audition results to show for it and is getting discouraged enough that they would be looking into audition coaching. By the way, side note, I didn't even put this in here, but it's worth noting that if someone is not looking for audition coaching, then the copy doesn't need to make any sense to them anyways. So if you think that that's like overly dramatic of you're discouraged, it's like, well, this is actually only for people who are discouraged. Because if somebody is kicking ass at auditions, they're probably not Googling uh, you know, services uh, to be able to get better at auditions. They're just going and winning auditions, right? So you have to market specifically to those people and not to anybody else. I think that's, um, you know, that, that's really important. Anyway, bottom line is always be thinking about what problem you are actually trying to solve for people. The people or person meticulously planning a wedding doesn't care whether you are playing piston or rotary valve trumpets. They just care that their day is perfect. So speak to that. And it's not that the concert presenter doesn't care what you play, but what they really care about is that their patrons and their board of directors are going to be happy that they brought you to town since there's a limited number of people on a concert series every year. And if you're taking up 20% of it, then you need to be the regular kind. You need to fit their expectations. Kronos Quartet is not the regular kind on a period instrument festival, and Pentatonix isn't the regular kind at a jazz festival. So make sure you convince the concert presenter that you are their regular kind, which requires research on your behalf, by the way. Uh, you have to figure out what their regular kind is and then speak directly to them about that without calling it the regular kind because they're going to wonder what the hell you're talking about. They'll be like, this tall tuba dude on the podcast said I had to tell you that I'm the regular kind and that you would hire me. Uh, actually, BCC me on that email. Um, I know CC me on that email because I would hope to get the reply. That would be spectacular. Anyway, marketing is really important and most musicians suck at it. Uh, and it's not because it, there's one reason. It's because we were never taught it ever, ever, ever. So taking the time to get even pretty good at it is an easy opportunity for you to stand out from the crowd and get a real advantage. So it is totally worth the effort uh, to, to try and get there. Thank you to everyone for listening, subscribing, leaving a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get TEM and simply for your attention, the most valuable commodity any of us have to give. TEM is produced by myself, Andrew Hitz, and is a part of the Pedal Note Media Podcast Network. The theme music for TEM is played by Ben Barron, Rich Kelly, Daniel LaPel, and myself, Andrew Hitz.
For show notes, the TEM blog, and to learn more about TEM coaching, please visit our website, tem.fm. And you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and sign up for our newsletter at signup.tem.fm. And that's going to do it for the latest episode of The Entrepreneurial Musician. Thank you.